So this program, it's a major um, that falls under the, the fine arts program, but it, it's housed within the faculty of arts. So in the same way you can get um, a bachelor in film production that falls under the faculty of arts, or you can get a, a bachelor of arts. For us, it's, it's a BFA. Um, now, having said that, uh, because a lot of students do ask this question, if you want to double major, and I know some of you listed that in the, uh, in the registration form, then you get to choose. If let's say you're doing a double major with political science or psychology or English literature, that's fine. You can still do that. You would need to satisfy the requirements for both major. And then you get the choice. You get to choose when I graduate, do I wanna have a BA or a BFA? Um, so that's, that's how that works. But otherwise, if you're just doing the creative writing major, which is um, fine in and of itself, you graduate with a BFA degree. Um, this is a closed studio program, and that's why you need to go through the application process, and we'll be getting to that in just a minute. So it focuses on experiential learning. Um, and so what that means is that rather than lectures, which you would get in many of our 200 and 300 level courses, in the 400 level courses, those are closed or restricted only to students in our major. And um, they're small, they have up to 12 students. And there it's a lot of writing. We call them workshops. Uh, we still call them courses, but we often call them workshops because what you're doing is you're producing works and then you're sharing them with each other and giving feedback to each other. Participation is a huge component, attendance and giving that feedback, are, they comprise a large portion of your grade for the course. In order to complete the major, you need to complete 36 credits of our 400 level workshop courses. And what that means is that translates to 12. So if you think that um, you enter the program in your third year, so you're gonna do six courses that year, which means three workshops per semester. And in fact, we have a cap on that. Because of the workload, students are not actually allowed to take more than three of our workshop 400 level courses per semester. So you do three in the fall semester, three in the winter, um, and then the following year, the other six. So that's a total of 12 or 36 credits. Now we do offer every summer one, sometimes even two 400 level workshops. So some students maybe in one semester, they only take two of the workshops and save that for a summer term. So you have some flexibility there. And there are some students, they take the five-year plan or the six-year plan. They spread it out a little bit. Of course, though, if you want to finish within four years, that's completely possible. This program is multi-genre in nature. So um, what that means is that we expect you to take courses in more than just one genre. Um, we, we do a cross training approach, if you will. Now on the application form, we do ask you, what is your primary interest in terms of genre? What is your secondary interest? And you will be handing in a portfolio that has two samples of writing in it that would focus on two of these genres. However, we don't, um, these questions are just about to ensure that the students we accept are multi-genre, that we don't say accept all students who are in poetry or only students in screenwriting. And we wanna make sure that when we go through all the applications, that we have that range of, of uh, genre there. And the other reason we, we ask for that too is that you are not beholden to your genre. So let's say you submit in the application portfolio one sample of um, dramatic writing and one sample of lyric writing. Well, let's say when you're going through the program and you're like, hey, you know what? I really thought I was gonna focus on dramatic writing, but now I actually think I'm gonna go for creative nonfiction. Who knew? You're allowed to do that. There's, there's that flexibility there. But one thing we do ask, and you see on the slide there, is that while you're making your way through 
those 36 credits or 12 courses, uh, that at least one course covers from four different genres. So let's say it's, um, you know, let's go back to, uh, well, uh, we have one, it's called video game writing. You're not allowed to submit that in the portfolio, but if you want to try it out at once and you take that one video game writing course, well, then you've covered one of your genres. Um, alternatively, if you really love fiction and you know that's what you want to, you know, that's where your passion lies, you are allowed to take up to four fiction writing workshops. Um, that is also allowed. What is the eligi el eligibility to apply? We don't have a GPA requirement. Yes, good grades are good to have, not just, you know, for us, but I mean, what I mean by that is, you know, just for you as well, in terms of um, your uh, diligence and in, in applying yourself to a course and, and creating good study habits. Um, if you're transferring from outside of UBC, and we do get that happening, um, you must first apply to UBC and get accepted by UBC. And those applications are due by UBC admissions. We don't, we don't, uh, address that with you, you need to do that through UBC admissions and the deadline is January 15th. Once you submit that application, um, then you can go ahead and apply for our creative writing major. Otherwise, if you're already at UBC, um, you're okay. Now, if you are in the bachelor, uh, sorry, if you're in the faculty of science, for example, or faculty of engineering, and we have seen this, you need to submit an application to the faculty of arts to get accepted to the Faculty of Arts. So make sure you check that. You would contact Arts Advising. Again, it's not something that we help you with, but in order to, um, uh, even if you are at UBC and you wanna get accepted to creative writing, you need to be accepted to the Faculty of Arts first. <clears throat> So uh, you, in terms of specific requirements, um, you need to have taken our Creative Writing 200 course. If you are transferring in from another university and can demonstrate that you've already taken a course there that is equivalent, we can cross that bridge at the time. That would go happen when you're applying to UBC admissions. They would ask you, do you have any transfer credits? And you would go ahead and submit the documentation for that. Often it's asking you to submit the syllabus so that we can take a look at it and determine whether equivalency is indeed there. Um, also, you need to have third year status, which means 54 credits completed. As long as you have 54 credits by September 2021, if that's the year you want to apply for, then that's okay. And we will, um, so what we do is if your application is accepted, we would uh, um, give you an, a, a con a conditional acceptance, which means that by August of 2021, you need to prove to us uh, with a uh, transcript that you have completed 54 credits. And also in there is that Creative Writing 200. Some students take Creative Writing 200 next summer. Again, it's a conditional uh, acceptance. So our application process will open on Thursday, January 7th and close on Sunday, February 28th. The, the application cycle is once per year and it's to start in September. So if you don't submit an application for January to February uh, during that window of application there, then you'll need to wait for the following year. There are three components to the application process. There's the online application form, which is will be on our website and it will open on January 7th and it will close on February 28th. We do not accept late applications. Um, along with the form, you will be asked to submit a cover letter and we will go through that shortly in another slide, but you will add it as an attachment. And then you'll be asked to provide two samples of writing from two distinct genres. And again, we've got lots of good details about that. And the, you will attach that to the form. All of you were emailed the BFA applications 
guidelines handbook when you received your Zoom uh, link uh, this morning. Make sure you go through that applications uh, uh, handbook very carefully. It answers a lot of the questions. It goes into great detail about what page lengths are required for submitting your samples of writing, what is accepted, what's not. Um, so be sure to look at those. At any time, you're welcome to email me. My email address is at the end of that applications handbook. It's also on the last screen. So feel free to contact me. We can help you out. So there, the guidelines are posted on our website. Um, once the applications come in, they will be circulated to fa our faculty members for review. Um, so three faculty members in total will review each application. Um, and we announce the acceptances, the results of the process uh, around the last week of April, but definitely by May 5th. And then uh, students get who are accepted uh, get a couple weeks to think about whether they want to accept our offer or not. We also do have a wait list that we um, have of students. So should a student decline an acceptance or have to withdraw an acceptance, we then uh, turn to our, our wait list. Uh, we often get asked, what is our acceptance rate? Um, so every year we get about 85 applications and we accept 28 to 32 students. So um, it's about a 26% acceptance rate. If you're wondering about uh, students who, uh, if you do make it to the wait list, uh, how does that work? Uh, this year, we'll probably be accepting about um, seven students on our wait list. And I'm just thinking last year, we ended up offering spots to two of the students on the wait list. And the wait list is ranked. So um, Nancy, I believe that uh, this is your slide here. Um, and actually, I, I probably, I apologize. Maybe I should, uh, before we move any further, introduce our wonderful panel of faculty members here. Um, Nancy Lee, who will speak in a, in a second, um, she uh, is uh, um, not only uh, an instructor in the program, uh, but she also, um, is our chair of our undergraduate program. So she is a, is a good resource. And I'll let Nancy share with you what her areas of specialty, specialization are. Okay, go ahead, Nancy. Hi, um, thank you so much, Sonia. My name is Nancy Lee and I teach fiction here in the program. I'm also the undergraduate chair, as Sonia mentioned. Um, and I think before we talk about the cover letter, let's just answer, um, Sonia, maybe you can help me answer a couple of questions that have come up in the chat, which okay. I know are sort, of, are sort of common questions. So let me just tell you what the two are here. Um, do we have to have taken Creative Writing 200 specifically, or does any 200 or 300 level course suffice? And then further, we've got a question from Jordan. Do we have to have taken Creative Writing 200 or do we just have to have taken a 200 level course? So for example, Jordan's already taken 201, 203, 205, 206. Uh, good question, Jordan. And sorry, you have to take Creative Writing 200. So there you go, right from Sonia. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the reason why, uh, Jordan, is because, you know, taking 201 is wonderful. You've got a nice, um, a nice introduction to poetry, but introduction to creative writing, that's Creative Writing 200, it introduces you to all the different genres. So lyric writing, dramatic form, writing for new media, creative nonfiction. We want you to have that breadth before uh, entering in the program. So it's not that you know there's anything wrong with taking just 201 or 209 fiction writing, but you won't have had that, um, that breadth there. Yeah. Now, Bella asks, I'm only interested in fiction writing. Am I allowed to submit one long sample for a fiction genre? 
No, Bella, sorry, you need to submit too, because as I mentioned previously, we are a multi-genre program. So we will want you to have um, experience and an understanding of a genre, not just in fiction. And then Sarah, oh, Sarah Grafe, one of our instructors has pulled up a, a question from deep in the chat. Uh, Farah asked a question regarding students applying from applied science. Do students outside of arts at UBC have to apply to arts first before applying to the program? Uh, the question is if a student is applying from outside of UBC? No, the student is in UBC but they're not in the Faculty of Arts, they're in the Faculty of Applied Science. Right, so- Can you further elaborate? Uh, just a second. Uh, so, I, I, um, so you do need to uh, go back, get in touch with the office admissions and state that you would like to move over to the Bachelor of Arts and there might be some paperwork for you to fill out for that. Oh, okay, that was my question, I'm sorry. Um, I just- it, was regarding so I'm in applied science and so I would apply to arts um, for the double major and then further apply to creative writing for the program in creative writing or do I just apply to the faculty of arts and let them know that my intention is to further complete the degree. You first go through the faculty of arts. Okay perfect thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So I think we're caught up on the chat. I'll, I'll talk about the portfolio requirements. And then of course, if you've got more questions, don't hesitate to add them to the chat. So um, basically, first of all, we've got the two uh, writing samples, which are, um, we've got a list of genres coming up. So you'll be able to take a look at the genres that we accept in, but the two writing samples are to give us a sense of um, your writing in, I would say, choose the two genres you feel that you're strongest in. That's my best advice there. Um, you wanna make sure that you pay attention to the page and formatting guidelines for each genre, because there are different page length requirements for uh, depending on the genre. And you can definitely use pieces from previous assignments. So if you've taken other creative writing courses and you've worked on short fiction or a group of poems or some graphic work, uh, you can definitely use those in your portfolio. You cannot include collaborative work. So the work has to be your own individual work and it should be original work, meaning, um, you know, uh, don't, if you've drawn some Spider-Man comics, that's not what we're interested in seeing. We're interested in seeing your own intellectual property. So make sure it's your work that has come entirely from you. Um, and in terms of um, the quotas, I'm, I'm not sure what this note means here, Sonia. That oh, that we're that we're not um, we're not saying like we only take X number of people in fiction or we only take X number of people in poetry. It really depends year to year. We get uh, different levels of applications in the different genres, and what we're looking for is a balance. Um, so there's no benefit. Let's let's put it this way: there's no benefit to applying in a genre that you think, oh, not a lot of people will apply with this genre. We really look at the strength of the work overall and um, you know, choose what we feel is the strongest work regardless of genre. Um, instructors and TAs will not review your portfolio before your application is submitted. So if you're in a course right now, um, your instructor is not gonna go over your portfolio submission with you and neither are the TAs in your course. Um, the TAs are of course there to review the work that you're generating for the course. So. I guess if you got feedback from your TAs on your assignments for your course, then you could consider that as like help with um, strengthening your work for the portfolio, but you can't take your portfolio submission to your TAs and ask them to review it. And of course, to submit your strongest, your best work, the work that you're most proud of. One thing that can be super helpful is um, if you do want to get help strengthening that creative submission is do some um, peer workshopping, maybe get together with some people in the courses that you're in right now and, and share and comment on each other's work and get some feedback and do some polishing and rewriting. That can be super helpful. But we're looking for really, you know, the work that you can do, that's what we're most interested in, is in looking at how does that work reflect on your skills and ability and your interests and um, your expression as an artist. Um, okay, so actually the next slide is um, 
uh, we talk, did I, Nancy, did I jump over the cover letter slide? I haven't talked about cover letters. Okay. <laughs> so let, let's stick. Sorry, everybody. I, 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 I'm, I have all these windows open on my thing. So I think I clicked. So we will get back to the cover letter. But now that we're into the portfolio, a couple of questions have come in the chat, I'll ask. And then the next slide is again about the portfolio. And that's where um, our other wonderful panel members will be able to uh, share some of their wisdom and experience as well. Um, one of the questions that has come up in the chat is, um, can, can a student submit a previously published work as, a, as part of their sample? Absolutely, I think that's fine. Um, if your work has been accepted for publication, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> and um, second of all, it's absolutely fine. If you feel that that's your strongest work, then by all means, you can include it in your portfolio. Okay. And uh, um, the, uh, the other question, which is comparable, thank you, Sarah, for answering uh, that one. There, there is a question about whether we will accept um, uh, work that's being published on social media or on the internet. Um, yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very well. We're not going to publish the work, so it doesn't matter <laughs> to us whether it's been published or not. Okay. Okay. So I will move on. Uh, th these are um, just let me. Okay. So just in case you, some of you might be wondering, we accept uh, samples of writing in nine different genres. So we've listed them here for you, poetry, new media, and we sort of break that down a little bit. But in terms of new media, make sure it's not just the outline of a project. It has to be the actual narrative project itself because we our job is to review your writing. And if it's you know, an outline that won't give us enough information. If you're unsure, you're always welcome to write me and I can follow up and get back to you. Um, so the third genre is writing for children and young adults, creative nonfiction, dramatic writing for the stage, dramatic writing for the screen, graphic forms, fiction, and that can include speculative fiction and then lyric forms. If you decide to submit as a sample of your writing, uh, lyric forms, the second sample you submit cannot be from poetry. It has to be um, one of the other ones, okay? So I'll just move then to the next slide. Um, okay, so here we have, uh, we're often asked this, you know, how can I make my portfolio wonderful or stand out? And um, there's no one set formula. Um, but we've, we've listed some points there, but I'm just going to open it up. Um, we, we can look at questions that come in, but we can also um, open up to the rest of the panel members if they want to dive in with a comment. And before you start, if you, if you aren't Nancy, um, please introduce yourself and uh, or I can introduce you and then maybe say what area you specialize in. So anybody want to go first? <laughs> Sharita, you're, you're nodding. Okay, this is Sharita Warrender. <clears throat> Hi everyone, sorry. <clears throat> Should have done that before I turned my mic on. Um, welcome, I'm glad you're here. And it's really exciting to be talking about applying to a BFA program. It's a really amazing program and I hope all of you put together a portfolio and, and give it your best shot. Uh, when I'm thinking about poetry, I'm also just thinking about writing in general that I think is really, um, that I find a connection with. And so I'm always thinking about concrete language, sensory language, uh, language that really stands out. So when I'm reading portfolios, I'm kind of looking for someone who's developing their sensibility on the page. I'm getting a really great sense of, the voice and uh, in your poems, I'm getting a sense of a speaker who has a distinct point of view and is looking out at the world and looking at themselves or creating voice um, that is distinct and singular. So you're, you're showing me, you know, what you see in the world that maybe other people aren't noticing. I think that can be really exciting and that can really set your portfolio apart from other writers. 
I'm Sharita. I teach in the creative writing program. I teach poetry. I also, for those people who are a little bit shy about making poems, I'm teaching a course right now, a kind of that looks at hybrid forms. So we don't have a genre at all assigned to the course. It's more about writing and how it can take different shape and different form. So if you're a little bit shy, but you want to get a poetry genre credit, you can take the hybrid forms class. And um, I will make sure you read poems in that class and maybe even write some lyrical writing. So uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you, Sharita. Any, uh, anybody else want to? Uh... I can add something. Hi, I'm Sarah Levitt. I teach comics classes at the undergrad and the grad level. And I think I recognize some names uh, in the participants. So if you're from comics class, hi, I hope you apply. Um, I, hi Eve. Um, I would say that one of the things that I really notice in um, application forms, it's partly logistical, is I always encourage people to leave yourself, and I know this is hard and I don't always succeed at it myself, but leave, leave yourself a day or two before the deadline to kind of, so you can step away from your portfolio and your application after you've finished it and then go back because it's really noticeable when somebody has left themselves enough time to go back and proofread, to go back and make sure things are in the right order, just to take another look at that, at that cover letter and make sure it says everything you want it to say. Um, I would say that that makes a, a huge difference. Um, and it demonstrates to us that you're really serious and that you've put a lot of effort into your portfolio. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say is that people often apply more than once. So if you don't, if you don't get in, um, that doesn't mean you're never gonna get in. So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sarah. Um, I, I'm the other Sarah. Uh, my pronouns are she, hers, and I teach uh, dramatic genres in the program. So screenwriting and playwriting. And I think I see some of our uh, undergrad screenwriters in, uh, in the participants list. So hello. Um, uh, just what we're looking for, both in, if, if you're submitting a sample in stage play or screenplay, obviously we're looking for great dramatic stories, you know, with, you know, that are clearly plotted, beginning, middle, end, climax, uh, you know, intriguing characters who come to life off the page. Uh, dialogue that rings true, that sings, but um, sort of another key piece that kind of makes or breaks submissions in these genres is, is sort of style and formatting. Because um, in these genres, you know, industry requires that you format your work in a specific way. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't taken, you know, playwriting or screenwriting at the 200 or 300 level to, to look up and, you know, to get a hold of a style guide, have that help you with your submission. If you're submitting screenplay, strongly urge you to use industry standard uh, screen writing software. So don't just try to make the formatting work in Word. Um, I, I know it sounds incredibly picky, but it kind of, I, I guess the, the scripts that are sort of properly formatted really stand apart. So even though if you have a brilliant story, that could sort of be the thing that syncs your application. Um, there's a lot of uh, free screenwriting software available if you uh, sort of do an online search. Programs like Celtics, Writer Duet, Highland 2, Fade In. So these are programs really easy to access online and to learn and actually will be far easier to learn than trying to, to format your work in words. So, so something to keep in mind. I'll add that these programs also have uh, stage play templates, which make it really easy to format your stage play. So, so for those dramatic genres, you know, how the, your, your piece is laid out on the page is super important, uh, you know, as, as important as your, your plot and your other content. Thank you, Sarah. And, and Tarek, do you, do you wanna add anything? Sure. Yeah. Hey everybody, um, my name is Tarek. I uh, teach the 200 class. So um, maybe uh, some of you are familiar with me from uh, our, uh, our time together there. Uh, I also teach uh, lyric songwriting and the grad level and the undergrad level. And um, I just wanna echo everything that all of my uh, uh, fellow faculty members have said 
I think that's all uh, super useful uh, information. So I won't, I won't, I, I will just underscore that. Uh, all those things are applicable uh, for what we're looking for in the lyric genre as well. Fresh voice, originality, all of those kinds of things. Um, just to give you a little specific note, if you are thinking about applying in the lyric genre, um, don't forget to include some kind of audio accompaniment to your um, to your written lyrics because uh, lyrics on the page, words on the page on their own don't necessarily fulfill the full DNA of the of what you're trying to do. We kind of need the musical part. And I know that's always a bit scary for people, and maybe the that might be the intimidation factor from the lyric genre. But don't be. Um, it doesn't have to be. You don't have to go into a professional studio to make your demo or anything. You can do something very simple on your phone or uh, on your computer or however you want to do it. it doesn't have to be complicated, but uh, it does help uh, for you to, to submit something that indicates how uh, a lyrical piece should go along with the words. Certainly the language and the lyric is important, but um, just so we have a clear sense of what's happening there um, from your uh, musical standpoint. And I will underscore again that if you are playing to take lyric as a genre, you don't have to be a, an expert musician or I've had students who really know uh, not much at all, haven't ever written songs before. So again, don't be intimidated by that, but do, uh, do contribute something that uh, has some audio information of some sort, can be simple, as I say, um, to go along with your uh, lyric. And again, if you have any questions about uh, uh, a lyric, uh, we can, uh, we put them in the chat and I can certainly address them specifically as well. But look forward to, uh, to, your, uh, to your applications and uh, good luck with all of this. Thank you very much, Tarek. That, that's wonderful as well. It's all this great uh, advice. And I, I think Nancy, you also want to contribute and I think noticed you wanted to answer a student's question in there. So yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll answer some of the questions that have come up about submitting in fiction. Um, first, just as a general note, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but your portfolio will be read by three different faculty members. So we have um, every portfolio is read by two faculty members in round one and um, a final faculty member in round two. Um, so you know that it's not just a single person making a, a determination on your portfolio. There's actually, um, we all, we go through all the portfolios and we score them and then the scores are tallied and there's all kinds of math involved. So, um, you know, it's a fairly rigorous process. Uh, somebody asked, Rona asked, um, would fiction include genre fiction? Can you clarify what is okay for fiction outside of contemporary fiction? So you may absolutely submit genre fiction, uh, but in terms of what we're looking for in the fiction is we're looking for the elements of good fiction regardless of genre. So uh, a sense of story structure, um, three-dimensional characters, strong pro style, use of concrete sensory detail, a focus on the specific uh, rather than generalizations and abstractions. So if you've taken creative writing 209 or 309 or 359, all of the elements that you've talked about in terms of craft in those courses, those are the things that we're looking for in the fiction submissions. But in terms of genre, um, definitely we're wide open. If it's great writing, if it's great fiction, we don't, we don't mind what genre it is. I think there were a couple other fiction questions too. Let me just scroll. Yeah. Through. Um, somebody asked if they if they it was okay to submit shorter pieces uh, for both of the prose forms. So for fiction or creative nonfiction, is it okay to submit like two shorter pieces, but they total the twenty to twenty five pages? That's totally fine. I would say um, in both of those genres, what we're looking for is that. Um, the length of the piece makes sense in terms of the piece itself. So uh, it's fine to submit shorter pieces if they work as short pieces. Um, but, you know, if, um, if your story is five pages long, but we read it and feel like, oh, this would really have been better as a 20 page story, then that's one of the ways in which we're going to judge the work. So just know that. Um, but at the same time, 
If you've got a five page story that's perfect as it is, don't stretch it into a 25 page story just to make the word count. It's better to submit multiple short pieces. And then I think somebody else asked if they could include an excerpt from a novel that they're working on, which is totally fine. Um, it may help to, um, yeah, a chapter excerpt from a novel. Yeah, so I would just mention with that submission that it is an excerpt so that we know how to read it. Um, I actually want to answer um, Matthias's question is also about ex excerpt, but this time it's for dramatic writing. Um, so you can uh, submit Matthias an excerpt from um, a piece of dramatic writing that you have written. What, it, what the handbook on page nine um, indicates is that what you cannot submit is that there's already a published play out there by somebody else. And this, this applies to really all the other genres as well. You can't take something that's previously published by somebody else and then take an excerpt of it and rework it like you have an idea for a new character or you wanna reimagine the setting or whatever. And you, you know, revise that and work it and then present that to us as if it's your own original work. We don't allow that. So yes, you can submit an, um, an excerpt from a play that you wrote, but just not an excerpt from another play that somebody else wrote that you somehow revised. I hope that answers your question. I know you're tired, you said you're tired, but. Uh, Sonia, can I speak a bit more for that? Yeah, I think, in a, please. I, I think maybe what, what we would see this most commonly in, in, in dramatic genres is in television. Um, I think it's called spec, ship, uh, spec scripts or show scripts that uh, TV writers typically have as writing samples. You know, say I write an episode of Bob's Burgers in my portfolio to show how I can write animation and comedy. Um, you know, I'm expected to have samples like that in my, in my um, portfolio. I know students have scripts like that. But because it's me writing in the voice of another show, I couldn't use that to apply to this program because we're looking for, you know, original work, original concepts, original stories created by you. So I think that's sort of a, what and when we're thinking, when we're saying, you know, your own original excerpt. Um, yeah, it's your, your story. It's not an adaptation for, from another genre. And it's, and it's not, you know, yes, yeah, someone else's show you're writing for, if that clarifies. Thank you, Sarah. And I, de I, I need to apologize, Matthias, if you're looking at me, I'm so sorry. It's Mason who asked the question. <laughs> um, I, you wrote and said, I, I'm sorry, I'm tired, but I really don't think I asked you that question. Mason uh, direct messaged me. Mason, that answer was for you. I hope that now covers everything. <laughs> so um, there, we've had a couple of more questions about sure. X, um, And so it w somebody asked, should I give some context to the excerpt. Um, again, I would say if you want to, if you feel like context would be important for the, for people who are reading your excerpt to understand it, then just minimal context, you know, a couple of lines, do not send the entire synopsis of your novel. Just a couple of lines of context is, is sufficient. And then someone else asked, does the excerpt have to come to uh, some sort of clear endings? So that was Rona who asked that. And I would say, not so much an ending, but you do want to choose an excerpt that feels somewhat self-contained so that we can get a sense of how you work with structure. So you don't necessarily want, for instance, to include an excerpt that's just a, um, you know, a, a chase scene, you know, from the, and that, that that's all it is. Like we can't see anything else except two characters running through a mall going from store to store. That's not going to tell us anything. So I would think about, is there a, a bit of a narrative arc to the excerpt? Can that excerpt stand as a self-contained thing? That would be what I would look for. Um, here's a good, sorry, Nancy, is it okay if I ask a yeah, next question yeah. um, that we got? Uh, so this is from um, uh, a student. Um, if one has applied before and perhaps not as much has changed in regards to their cover letter, is it highly discouraged to just reuse or rework that same cover letter? Oh, we should probably talk yeah, about cover letters. About, yeah, okay. Let's, uh, let's just see if there's any more about portfolio. So Mason, if you can just hang on, we will get to uh, cover letters in a sec. But since we're still deep diving into the uh, 
um, portfolio here. I think we've had a couple of um, questions about poetry. I'm, I'm way back in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's one uh, here that just came in um, for fiction writing. I noticed there was a 10 page minimum and a 20 page maximum. Does that mean if I was to submit more than one piece of fiction writing, neither piece can be any more or less than 10 pages long? Or do you care more about the quality of the story than the exact page count? Um, the, well, those are the those are the minimums and the maximum for the total submission. Yeah. So if you're if you're gonna submit two pieces in the fiction, then they can't be each more than ten pages. And uh, Nancy, was there another question you said you were? deep back in the chat that I maybe missed or do you want to talk about cover letters and I can scroll back well and... I think I think we should just um continue on with these questions so I want to make sure everybody's okay. question gets answered so uh Sharita can you expand on poetry I'm I'm picking on Sharita here this is from Nicole can you expand on poetry how long does it have to be does it need to follow guidelines certain structures how many poems do we have to submit so first of all I'll say Nicole uh, the genre requirements for each genre are in the guidelines that were sent to you with the link to this Zoom. So please review mm -hmm. those. But um, Sharita, can you just say something in terms of, is there a sense of the type of poetry it has to be? Yeah, that's a great question. I No, there doesn't have to be. There is no rules about the kinds of poems you're interested in writing. Uh, someone asked about the length, they can be two lines or even one line can be a poem and it can also go a couple of pages, two or three pages long, that's a poem as well. Uh, I think what you want to keep in mind is that you're showing a range of the kinds of decision making that can go into a poem. So. For example, you're thinking about the way that you're turning your lines. In one poem, you might create a prose poem, but then you wanna show that you understand line length and the way it moves. So show, don't just give us 15 pages of prose poems, give us a bunch of different kinds of poems to show your range. I think that is a good uh, rule to go by. Great, and then I have another question. Is it okay yes. to submit romantic poems? Yes, this is and from Rachel. I love romance. Um, write me poems. That would be great. No, <laughs> uh, any kind of any genre of poem, like a sci-fi poem or romantic poem, old school kind of um, Renaissance poems. All of those things are welcome. We just want to see your point of view, your sensibility, what you're noticing in the world, what you're paying attention to, and you're really looking at very concrete moments in your experience, in your imagination, in your observations of the world. So staying away from abstract concepts and, and sticking really close to the concrete sensory world. Great, thank you, Sharita. Yeah. Emily, Emily asked, is there anywhere we can see examples of uh, accepted and rejected portfolios? No, there is not because these portfolios are all confidential. Um, other than the faculty members who read and rank them, no one else is going to see them. So unfortunately we don't have any examples to show you. Um, let's see, what else? Oh yes, there was a question here from Emma about um, can you double major in creative writing and English lit? Sonia, can you? Uh... Yeah, I answered her in the chat. And oh, okay. We, we, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yay, okay. And then I'm just scrolling here to see if there's anybody else. There was one question that got missed and it was about careers. And I think Sarah oh, Grace, yeah. you had a really thoughtful answer for that. And well, so this was like, oh, Sonia. Do, do you mind if we do the cover letter and then we'll get to that? Cause the cover letter sort of is still in the same, is that okay? Yeah, that, that question just got buried, that's all. Okay, okay. thank you. Let's yeah. hold on to that question. Um, so I'll just add that if you're asking in the chat, how long should a particular genre be again, go take a look at the guidelines that were sent to you with the link to this zoom. And, um, Sonia, do you want to go back to the, um, cover letter? Oh, um, I, you know, I just thought since, um, I, uh, I just thought since there's so many questions that why don't I just, um, Sorry, if you can just give me a sec here. 
feel free to talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Do you want me to talk about the cover letter while you're doing that? Oh, oh okay, just a sec here, let me- uh... No, no, I've got the notes in front of me here. So the cover letter is your opportunity to tell us about who you are. Um, we'd like to know things like, oh, now I can't see. <laughs> oh. You're gonna have to put your screen back to the other, to the cover letter. Oh, I thought it, oh, there we go. Is there. that okay? Yeah, there we go. Okay, sorry. Um, so uh, this is your opportunity to tell us something about who you are, about why you wanna pursue a creative writing major, about the genres that you're most interested in, and um, a little bit about your creative goals. Like what do you want to do with your creative writing BFA? And what are some of your creative influences? So who are the artists or writers who've really influenced you? Um, and you can maybe even tell us a bit about what you've enjoyed in the previous creative writing courses, if you've taken creative writing courses before, what you've enjoyed in those courses. We're really just looking for a sense of who you are and what your connection is to writing um, and you know why you feel like this program is going to be a great fit for you. It, we're not really, you know, we're not assessing, it's not like a job application where it's like there's a right answer. We really just want to get a sense of what your connection is to the genres that you're working in and um, what you hope to get out of the process of doing a BFA. So there's no kind of secret sauce. There's no secret formula. Just the more you can tell us about your connection to the genres that you're writing in and, and um, either what they give to your life or how they make you feel or um, which artists have influenced you. Those are the kinds of things that we're interested in. I don't know if that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Anybody want to add anything? Uh, Tarek, Sarah, Sarah, Sharita. There's a question that just came up from Eve. Uh, awards, publications, workshops, just basically previous experience. That doesn't have very much bearing on our on our reading of your portfolio at all. It's just nice to know what your experience is within um, any kind of writing community. So don't worry if you don't have any any kind of thing like that. That's not going to have an impact on um, the quality of your work is the main thing. It really is. Do we want to answer Mason's letter, uh, Mason's, or Mason's letter, Mason's question too, which is if nothing much has changed, um, is it highly discouraged to reuse or rework the same? I think it's fine to reuse or rework the same cover letter. Again, um, the work is going to be judged on its own merits. I don't, you know, the cover letter is not where we make our decisions in terms of who, who is going to be accepted or not accepted into the program. So I think it's totally fine. That said, I would encourage you to, like, I would like lean towards rework rather than reuse because if you're you know obviously you're motivated to apply again obviously you're still you know as interested it may feel like not a lot has changed in a year but I mean especially this year a lot has happened have your <laughs> have your goals changed uh, are you know are you coming at the you know is it yeah is, is has anything shifted or changed for you at all maybe it hasn't but you know I think it's really important to ask yourself those things rather than just you know whipping off the same letter as before I, I my sense is you'll probably have a stronger stronger letter and we'll get to know you a little better if you take that time. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, well, maybe what we'll do at this point is um, the last slide is, are there any other questions? But I, I do understand that one of them is about career opportunities, uh, what could getting, um, this BFA degree, if you choose to do the BFA or, or the double major, either one, what, what would be post-graduation uh, prospects for you? So, uh, Shrita, since you, did you want to go ahead and say something to that effect? And then, um, yeah. Yes. There are so many poetry careers out there. <laughs> no, I think each of us kind of had examples of students um, out, out of a BFA program, working in technical writing and tutoring and running community workshops, 
beginning a, a, perhaps a vocation in teaching. Um, those are some of the things that writing can uh, benefit. But one of the things I talk about with my students is this notion of attentiveness and how attentiveness can be drawn on for any pursuit, anything that you're interested in doing as a job in your life is going to require a specific amount of attentiveness. So there are so many skills built into just our experience learning to express ourselves in language. There's so much inherent in that that really you can apply it to any job you might try your hand at in the future. So um, in terms of, I don't usually use that word career, but in terms of skills, applicable skills, there's a whole ton of soft skills and sort of skills of knowing yourself and, and developing a, a selfhood over time. I think writing really helps build that, build character and build um, empathy too. So those things are not to be discounted, I think. I think the two Sarahs wanted to weigh in on this one too. Yeah, I could talk a little bit about that. Like I'm uh, somebody who, like I worked as a, a freelance writer for quite a while working with nonprofits and doing stuff like, you know, newsletters and website content and promotional content. And I, um, you know, I worked as a communication specialist at a research institute. And the things that really helped me were just that I had, I had learned how to do storytelling. And that's a huge skill that's lacking in a lot of sectors and, and that people need. Um, and I was also gonna mention like lately, I've been doing some work, some collaborative work with the um, Faculty of Medicine. And, um, you know, lots of people are interested in comics as a form of education or as a form, even as a form of research. Um, there's, there's lots of kind of, you know, you might not graduate with a BFA and like immediately snap up some super high paying job. That's probably unlikely, but you're going to have this really solid set of skills. Like Sharita said, that's going to be really applicable to work in other sectors or, you know, if you're doing a double major. Um, so there are, there's really cool opportunities out there um, that I think are well worth, you know, just, just looking into. And I, I'd be happy to talk more about, about people if you have more questions like that. Uh, just adding on to that, I just want to echo the point that good writing is needed across sectors and, uh, you know, it may not be as clear cut a career path as saying, you know, going to med school and becoming a doctor where you have those requisite number of steps, all kinds of different paths coming out of this degree. But interestingly, like Sarah, post degree, my, my first gigs were also in the nonprofit sector in communications. I know we've had grads uh, work in communications in business and in government, um, like, you know, drafting government legislation and policy like that. The, the writing skills are, are so important there. Um, I know uh, sort of the dramatic writers who've come through the program have had great opportunities in arts administration. So we've had uh, students who, who've gone on to intern and then get jobs at, at companies like Richmond Gateway Theater, Playwrights Theater Center, and uh, screenwriters, uh, BFA, you don't necessarily need you to go on to an MFA to uh, get your foot in the door in the industry. We've had examples of writers who've, who've um, interned and landed jobs in TV writing rooms. Uh, we've had students uh, get into the Canadian Film Centre, which is sort of Canada's version of the AFI, our sort of uh, foremost, you know, postgraduate training program. And, you know, I, I guess a sort of stellar example is a BFA student, Tara Armstrong, who went on to have her series, Mary's Kills People, um, produced on Global, but that was a BFA project that I went on to do that. So all kinds of possibilities with your BFA. Thank you, Sarah. Um, you know, just uh, there have been a couple questions that have come in about co-op. Um, and uh, Sarah, I noticed that you said, that you answered one st student and said uh, that we've had several BFAs do co-op placements. And the next question came in is like, what, what were they? Do you, are you able to speak to it all about what, or is that something a question should go through arts co-op program? Well, certainly Arts Co-op has more information and I don't know all the details in terms of, you know, how, how you apply. I know, again, I guess in my playwriting classes where I have encountered this most students who are in Arts Co-op, also in our BFA program, and, and they've had some amazing placements, again, with arts service organizations, with theaters, um, 
getting to sort of shadow dramaturges at Playwrights Theater Center. Some really exciting opportunities, um, magazine writing and editing. Um, so, so, and I think Arts Co-op does a, a good job at finding really um, interesting placements in the community. So a really good way to start getting some of that career experience while you're still doing your degree. And I know they, they work hard to find places around the city who are looking for good writing and, you know, there are probably some opportunities we haven't even thought of here as we're talking, you know, going back to the idea that all sectors need good writers. So I know uh, the students who were in that program were very satisfied with the program. I, I think the only thing I do know about it is I think it takes a little longer to finish your degree because you're you're doing some credits and then you'll go off for a term to do a co-op placement and then you'll come back. Again, I'm not the expert on this. You'll want to talk to Arts Co-op for, for more details, but if, if that is something that interests you, I know the students who've been through that program have found it really positive. And I think they've, you know, it's sort of led to employment beyond their degree. Thank you. Um, I think we've covered, uh, um, as from what I can say, looking into the chat, uh, all of the questions, uh, any Nancy or Tarek or Sarah, Sarah, Shreya, do you notice uh, anything we may have missed? I noticed that Farah or, or Farah, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but um, there was a question about in terms of nonfiction, what should we write about? And I do want to say that's the one area of the portfolio w w that we can't give guidance on <laughs> is content. The content is entirely up to you. Um, and uh, but I will say that what we're looking for there is, um, you know, creative nonfiction. So anything within the nonfiction realm, whether it's um memoir or personal essay, um, if you've got um, some experience doing magazine writing or that sort of thing, uh, profile writing, feature writing, that would be fine too. Um, but yeah, in terms of the content, that's the part that's really up to you. And I would say that we're fairly open in terms of um, reviewing content that our faculty is widely experienced in all aspects of genre. So you don't need to worry about that. Thank you, Nancy. Um, we have a question here about doing study abroad. Um, if you decide you want to do a semester abroad somewhere and that, that you would apply for through UBC's Faculty of Arts, we don't um, process those applications or anything like that. But we have had students go and do a semester abroad and they've taken creative writing courses at the other institution where they've traveled to. And then what we do, just like any other student who's transferring over from say Langara or Concordia University, or we would uh, review the syllabus if you took a, a creative writing course at the other institution and uh, evaluate for whether or not you get uh, credit equivalency. Some, some courses that our students have taken, uh, there, you know, for example, a student was in, at the University of Melbourne uh, a couple of years ago and uh, I think one or two of their courses, uh, we were able to um, grant credit for in our program. It just really depends on the course that you take and whether or not it's comparable to something that we offer in terms of our 400 level workshops. And I just wanted to jump in and answer Matthias's question again, um, because I'm not sure if we, if we understood the question the first time we answered it. Matthias, just to, just to clarify, in terms of the 10 page minimum and the 20 page maximum, basically um, your total portfolio, you wanna make sure that you're within those numbers. So you can have an individual piece that is longer than 10 pages and you can have, um, or you can have multiple small pieces to form the 20 page maximum. But basically, if the entire submission is less than 10 pages, the, there's not enough there for us to judge the writing. Uh, this other question just came in about um, a submission for the nonfiction genre. Could it be a piece of stand up comedy? Well, we it would. I mean, we it could be a comedic piece, um, but I'm guessing that if it's going to be um, evaluated 
as nonfiction, the nonfiction faculty are going to be looking at it for qualities of nonfiction writing. So um, it can certainly be a humorous piece of nonfiction, but you need to make sure that form and uh, that form wise, it, it is readable as a, uh, as a piece of nonfiction. I hope that's clear. So not just a page of jokes <laughs> is what I'm saying. As great as that would be to read. I mean, I personally would love to read a page of jokes, but they're going to be assessing it as a piece of nonfiction. Uh, yeah, any other questions at all? I see where um, some of you might be wanting to get going. It's we're gone a little bit over the hour, but uh, this is your chance. If you have something else, type it in the chat. If not, um, here is uh, my contact information on that slide there, creative writing, crwr.undergrad at ubc.ca. Anything that, uh, I would suggest, please read through that handbook very carefully. It, it goes into great detail and especially page nine. I, when I was trying to stop sharing my screen, I thought, well, why don't I just pull up page nine and share it with all of you? But uh, I, then I got, you know, lost in, in all the windows that are open on my uh, screen right now. But please check out page nine. It, it says right there, like I'll say poetry, maximum 10 pages, this or, you know, and for every genre, it gives you nice um, description of the, the page number double spaced. Um, and, uh, you know, include page numbers. And make sure it's your own original work. Yeah, and if you still have a question though, you're always welcome. And uh, as I mentioned, the applications will open on January 7th. So, you know, at uh, 1159, you can open your computer on uh, <laughs> Wednesday, January 6th and go in, but you, you get almost two months to, to complete the application. So lots of time in there to put things together, to ask questions if something comes up to while you're putting your portfolio together. And then, as I mentioned, it'll close at 11.59 on the 28th and we don't accept uh, late applications. Yeah. Uh, yes, Jordan, if you take Creative Writing 200 next semester, you can still apply this year. You can even take Creative Writing 200 next summer if you're offered um, uh, a spot and you and your plan is to take it in the summer we would what what we offer you is a conditional acceptance contingent on um, that you complete that by the end of the summer but yeah you can take it next semester uh, while you're uh, completing the application I mean, all of you too, I mean, you need to have 54 credits, right? So we know that next semester, you're still working your way through your 54 credits. So we don't expect you to have everything wrapped up in a neat bow by February 28th. I think I just, hopefully I just answered your question, Kayla. Okay, well, I, I guess we'll uh, wrap it up there. Um, thanks again, everybody for coming. Thank you to our esteemed faculty members, Sarah Graef and uh, Sharita Warner, Nancy Lee, Tara Hussein and Sarah Levitt. I really appreciate your time and it was great to see you and uh, look forward to hearing from you. I'm sure I'll get some emails in the next few days. Oh, somebody says, what exactly is digital formatting? Oh, sorry, the digital storytelling format? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I would say for that, if, um, if you contact us, we can, we can give you some more information on that. Like if you've, got a, if you've got a digital storytelling project and you've got a link to it, that would work. Yeah, we can definitely contact Sonia, I would recommend. But uh, a more important question is where can people access this recording? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be posting it to our creative writing um, program website. It'll be underneath the undergraduate tab and it'll be up there by Thursday. Just need to go look through the transcript a little bit and, uh, and then post it up on Thursday. 
So feel free to forward it on to anybody who wasn't able to make it today who you know. Okay, thanks everyone. <laughs>